the world will tell you that the most important thing for you to have is self-love. That your truth should be the foundation of the way you live and that your greatest pursuit is your happiness. And that is garbage. Hey everybody, so last week I was on Facebook and saw somebody share a quote by Ali Beth Stuckey and it said, isn't it interesting that despite increasingly incessant calls to love yourself and to just do what makes you happy, people are more depressed and anxious than ever. Almost like self-love and personal gratification aren't the answer and may in fact be the culprits. So I read this, I thought, you know, like I agree with Ali, I think this is good, but a lot of people don't. So it got me thinking, uh, as people, when we're communicating, we don't want to assume that somebody lays a term out and that we have the same definition for that term. So self-love is something that our culture is talking about a lot and something that I think we owe it to the people that we're talking to, uh, people who would object to this statement and say, no, like we think self-love is a good thing and you need it and it's going to help you live a healthy and wonderful life. What do they mean by that? So if you do a search on Google, which is what most people will do when they're looking for definition of term or help with something, you know, you do this search for self-love. One of the top posts uh, that will come up is an article by Huffington Post, Five Steps to Self-Love. There's a number of other companies that are selling stuff uh, to kind of help you with your self-love. But Huffington Post, you know, is a fairly... Uh, out there article uh, generator, you know, news source or whatever for, for our culture. Not necessarily that I agree with them, but they're prominent. Uh, they say, number one is you need to make peace with your insecurities. Number two is that you accept that perfection does not exist and you accept your flaws. Uh, number three is that you discover what is important to you. Number four is to grow in ways that support what is important to you. And number five is to rinse and repeat. Now, I'm a Christian and I approach these always from the lens of scripture, from you know, kind of a foundation that God is the center of the universe. The world has a different uh, perspective on this. And I think if we look at the messages of the world, the media that's being created. So I watch a lot of children's content. My kids are five and nine. Uh, you know, Frozen was big in our house. And you know, it's a good cartoon, good animation. Uh, most of the world loves Frozen. Frozen has some problematic things to it. You know, it's all about self-discovery. It's all about accepting ourselves. This releases Elsa's power. There's the kind of oppressive authority that's over her that's keeping her from unleashing that power. We see that in Frozen 2 as well with even Elsa, you know, holding Anna back. This is just the value of like self being the driving factor, that you are being held back, that you are being told that you're nothing, told that you're dirty and, and not good, and that that is not true and that you need to believe the truth about yourself. You know, talking about some of these things, there's, there's uh, good examples of this, even scripturally, as you know, from my perspective, when I look at, you know, make peace with your insecurities. What are your insecurities? Now, I would say we do need to make peace with our insecurities. We need to make peace with our insecurities of what other people think about us, absolutely. I think this would be something that we could find common ground on. We should not define ourselves by what others think about us. Uh, insecurities about you know, the way we look or the way we act. We should not find our identity in the way that we look. These are healthy things and biblical things uh, that, that would align with what I would say is God's truth in the world and guiding us on how to live successfully and have true peace and, and understanding. Accepting that perfection doesn't exist and accept your flaws. Again, step number two, right? Perfection doesn't exist uh, in you, which I, I think is what they're trying to get at. And I would agree with, we do not have perfection. Perfection does exist though. And that is one of the I think the driving force between those who embrace self-love is a healthy thing and a lot of the Christian conservative movement that would go against self-love is the Christian conservative movement sees like, hey, there is a standard that we need to live up to and that, you know, how we live up to that standard is giving us some value. And what people on the other side would say like self-love is that this standard is corrupt and it's telling us that we need to be something that we're not and there's we don't need to be ashamed of that. So it all hinges on what is the standard. And this is where I think the general self-love movement gets into trouble 
if we look at stage number three to discover what is important to you, there's, there's some truth to this, right? We want to discover what's important to you, but what if it, what's important to me is going and murdering people? Cool motive, still murder. What if what is important to me is going and stealing things so that I can have my self-gratification? I love stealing things. Right? Anybody would say those are wrong. So everybody agrees that there are some right and wrong things that would define whether our self-love is justified or not. And I think both sides, as we look at the concept of self-love, we make some mistakes, right? You know, me being more on this conservative side, I would say we often would deny the fact that there is authoritarian corruption that is putting responsibilities or expectations or definitions on people that are not right and that we need to cast those aside. The Bible would actually say the same thing. So we would actually be in agreement if we stopped and listened to each other. The second thing that I think we you know, would, would want to acknowledge is that on this side, there tends to be a, your truth is your truth. And it doesn't matter what anybody says, that's what you have to live by. And we see that message reinforced in dozens and dozens of movies and TV shows every year. You know, if you uh, become comfortable with yourself, that unlocks your power within you. The biblical account of this would be if you come, become comfortable with yourself, if you acknowledge who you are, you realize that you are in need of a savior. And that savior comes in and transforms you and that you can have identity in him and all of the self-confidence and self-love that come through that joining with the creator who has filled the gaps that you are seeing. Minus that truth, self-love leads to corruption. And I think about, you know, when, when I look at this topic, I, I come back to Romans all the time. Um, Romans in chapter one, uh, this is Paul talking about just the way that the world has fallen away from God in their rebellion and that it's corrupted their mind. And in verse 24, it says, Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. This is the core difference between this. And, and when we see things online, we want to know where are people coming from. If somebody says, like, self-love was important, don't hear automatically that they're just worshiping themselves and just affirming themselves and everything and that there's no connection to truth. It could be that they have real hurts that need to be addressed. And what they don't need to hear is that, well, you're wrong and you're selfish and you're prideful. What they need to hear is God is the real solution, the real thing that is going to fill those gaps that you feel. Because even if they are in a self-love cycle, even if you are in a self-love cycle that you're trying to accept yourself, you're trying to affirm yourself and, and look at the things that you feel and the things that you think and saying, this is true and there's nothing wrong with that and I'm going to be there, your feelings do not define what truth is. It's just, it's a hard reality that we all have to deal with. My feelings don't define what truth is. Your feelings don't. It doesn't matter who you are. God created the world and it functions in a very real way. And if we want to impose our belief systems to try to change the universe, we are destined for futility and destruction. It is more important for us to know the way the world works, the reality that's there, and then align ourselves with that value system. And when we are aligned with that value system, we can be given confidence, we can be enjoying the value that we have, and the rightness, the goodness that's in there. Just as in, if we are desiring murdering people and stealing from people and you know, dishonoring people and hurting people, those are wrong things. And we should not have self-love for ourselves and those desires that are not right. Which desires are true and not, that is up to God, it's not up to me. How do we navigate this world? It's a complicated system. I hope that this, something that stirred thoughts in you. We'd like you to connect with us, maybe like, share, subscribe this video out onto the web, send it to somebody that might find it encouraging or interesting. We'd love for you to comment below and tell us how you feel. You know, are, are there things that, uh, you know, self-love that you have kind of looked at and that, that self-focused uh, acceptance and whatnot that have helped you? 
or that you've seen damaging to other people, we'd love to get a conversation started to help others. So God bless you guys. Hope that you enjoyed, and we will see you next time.